In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do natural looking HDR combining these images into this. Okay, so we've got our Photoshop Elements 14 loaded up. I've got Photo2.jpg and Photo3.jpg also loaded up. Now in Photo2, what I want to do is I want to combine the lighter parts of this image, specifically in the bridge section, with Photo3. And I really like the dynamic sky in Photo3 and also the water sections in this. So I'm hoping to combine these two images to produce something that has a wider color base than what we see in the photos individually. Firstly, what I'll need to do is go into Photo 3, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and I'll go into my Photo 2 and Control V to paste. So closing down Photo 3 because we don't need that anymore, what I have here is Layer 1. I'll just close this Actions panel for now. I've got Layer 1, which is what was previously Photo 3, and I've also got the background layer, which is what is Photo 2 at the moment. So you can see that as I turn off the Layer 1. So now what I want to do is I want to combine these two images by firstly aligning them and then masking over the top of layer 1 to reveal parts of the background image. So firstly to align the images, I'll need to do this manually because it seems that Photoshop Elements 14 doesn't have the auto alignment uh, features that Photoshop CS6 or above does. To do this manually, what I'll need to do is click on layer 1, I'll change the blend mode now to difference, and what difference does is it'll select the values of layer 1 and compare that to the value of the pixels in the background layer, making a subtraction of these values, resulting in this black image here. Ideally how we use this uh, to align the images on top of each other, we want to get this image as black as it can possibly get. So what I'll do is I'll click on this icon here, which will allow me to move the layer 1 image up, down, left and right using my directional keys. So as I move it left, I can see that the bottom section here is getting more and more black, which is what I want. And I think this is the best possible alignment I can make. Notice that it will never be 100% aligned, as for this image there was environmental factors such as the wind blowing my tripod around, and also the wide angle lens, which had some heavy distortion on it. So now I can switch the blend mode back to normal and work on these two layers. I'll click on the unlock button here and I'll move this layer zero. It looks like it's conveniently named itself layer zero. So I'll move this layer zero to the top here because I find it much easier to work with the foreground image masking in the sky at a later stage. So ideally what I want to do here is I want to take layer 0 and I want to wipe out sections of this sky and I want the sky from layer 1 to seep through into this image. First step, I'll click on the more button at the bottom. I'll load up my Lenny K Actions Toolkit and I'll click on the View All Selections button running that action. So what this will do is it will load up lights 1 to 5, darks 1 to 5 and mids 1, 2 and 3. These lights, darks and mids layers are black and white images which select different parts of the photo based on how bright the pixels are. So I'll just get rid of this Actions tool panel for now. Holding Alt, I'll click on Lights 1. So whatever is white in this image will be masked out and whatever is black will be left behind. I can see that this is not as selective as I want it, so I'll move up the chain to lights 2. Yeah, that looks good. Lights 3 becomes more selective to the sky and masks everything else out. Lights 4 and 5, so forth. So for this example, I'll just work with lights 2. I'll click on lights 3, all the way up to mids 3 by holding shift and dragging that into the rubbish bin. You can see that it went red because of some issue with the alpha channels. However, this doesn't affect our image at all. So I've still got lights 1 here. I want to get rid of that too. Great. So I've left with lights 2, layer 0 and layer 1. Firstly, I want to create a layer mask on top of layer 0 by hitting this icon here. I want to hold down my control button and click on the mask selected by lights 2. 
This will show up with a selection as dictated by these marching ants. I find it quite distracting, so I'll con press Control, holding that down, and I'll also press H to hide these marching ants. Although I can't see the marching ants, this selection is still active. I'll now be working inside this layer mask, which is attached to layer 0. Clicking on my tool brush and using the color black, I'll increase the size of this brush. Go to the tool options, I'll change it to 50%. And I'll work with uh, this layer mask by painting over the top in black. So as we can see here, as I paint through, the sky from underneath is showing through. So I'll maybe put about 30% in this top section here. Ideally, I'm painting with a much higher opacity than I normally would. I'd probably be painting, if I were to edit this, in 20%, so that the blending looks very, very natural. And I'll paint this bottom section here too. I've now effectively combined the sky from layer 1 with the nice looking jetty from layer 0, resulting in this high dynamic range image. I haven't used any HDR processing software, which has left artificial halos and misalignments in my image. All I need to do now is to crop this image by pressing C and selecting the area which I'd like. That looks good, so I'll hit the green tick button and there's our image completed. Thanks so much for checking out this video. You can check out my YouTube channel or my website for free videos and other free stuff.